All right, hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. So in today's presentation, we are talking all about core training for hikers, which is a really, really, really valuable aspect of training for any type of hiker. Um, and today we're just gonna be going into a little bit of detail around um, why this is important, um, how I like to go about it with my hikers and share with you some great exercises which you may be able to incorporate into your routine. So to start with, let's get into it. So core training is something that most hikers kind of know that it's important. Um, you know, most people have been told in their life, hey, a strong core is important or hey, you need to improve your, your core strength or whatever it may be. And most hikers in their head, they're like, you know what, this is probably something I should be doing. But in all honesty, most hikers, when it comes down to it, they don't really know why this is important. They don't really know how to go about this in the most effective way. They don't really know a huge amount of detail on this. So today we're gonna to be going into this subject and I'm just gonna be sharing, yeah, why this is important in my belief in the hiking context and how I like to approach my training for my hikers, which I think is pretty effective. Um, and yeah, share with you a few great exercises to help. So to start with, why train the core? You know, you, as I sort of said, most people are aware training the core is valuable, is important, but why actually do it? I wanna explain this a little bit more. Now, the core does have many different de definitions when it comes down to, depending on how you ask. Like for a lot of people, when we think about the core, we think about our abdominals, that midsection when we do like crunches or sit-ups, it gets really burning. We're like, hey, the abdominals, that's kind of our core. On the, the and it's, it's not quite as simple as that. Now, on the other scheme of things, some people like to sort of say, look, you know, almost all of the muscles in your body are your core um, because everything connects to everything and everything helps support everything and this and that, which you know may be technically correct, but it's not super useful. Really the definition, um, we're gonna be looking at core today and a really easy way to look at it is essentially the core are the muscles in the abdominals, the back, the hips and the pelvis. So the abdominals, midsection in the front, the back, midsection, your hips and your pelvis, which are responsible for supporting the trunk. So your trunk is like your, mid, your torso. Um, and essentially those muscles in those areas which help support and stabilize the trunk, that's kind of the core, which there are a lot of different muscles in there and a lot of different things that are going on there, but that's kind of what we're looking at in regards to the core. And I think that covers it you know, pretty well. Now for a hiker, strengthening the core has a multitude of benefits. We could be on here for half an hour and I could list off all the specific benefits and this and that, but there are a few really, really big ones just to kind of keep the top of mind, which are really relevant for hikers. Now, number one, improve balance and stability. Basically, if you can improve your core strength, this can have an impact in regards to your balance, can have an impact in regards to your stability in certain situations. Now, day-to-day -day life, you know, this may not be such a big deal, but for hikers specifically, when we're off and on rougher terrain, we're rock scrambling, when we're going up steep steps or whatever it may be, this is pretty important. Um, so strengthening up the core can be a factor to improve these things. Now, strengthening up the core can also improve performance because the core, the midsection, connects the upper body to the lower body. Um, when we do movements, typically the body doesn't like to move in isolation. If we're doing something through the legs, it's exerting force somewhere and we want that force to come up through the body and has different, uh, different things going on. <laughs> Very technical explanation. But basically, lower body and upper body, we want connected and the core and a strong and stable core can help connect that. So essentially in certain situations, really, really beneficial. On steep up hills and steep steps, if we're stepping up steep steps, we're typically applying force into the ground, really, really pushing into things. If the core is a little bit weak, if it's a little bit fatigued, if it's a little bit unstable, a lot of that force that we're pushing into the ground, some of that can be lost and it turns into a slightly less efficient movement, which can lead to a little bit more fatigue or just make things a little bit harder than they need to be. Alternatively, the core is nice and strong, nice and stable, it's not fatigued, we can be a bit more efficient. Same thing for downhills. When we're taking steep steps downhill, if we're just kind of wobbling all over the shop and our core isn't, our torso isn't really stable or supported, it can be really hard. So if we improve this, then we can be a little bit quicker or we can be more confident and our performance can increase. The next thing, pack carrying. Like pack carrying is so relevant for hikers, whether it's a day pack or a heavy pack, having that on you really does challenge the body in a multitude of different ways. Having a strong and stable core and improving strength through that area can help support that, make that a little bit easier, make you be able to go a bit quicker, make things feel a little bit more comfortable, very, very relevant. And also if you're training as well, as much as we're talking about specific hiking here, obviously training for hiking will help your hiking. And if we can improve our training, we'll improve our hiking. And having a stronger core can make a lot of our training a little bit more effective, whether it's our strength training, whether it's our cardio, whatever it may be, can be really valuable for that. And then finally, also protect against pain and injury. Now, I will sort of say before I go into this, this can be a factor. It is not the whole picture. A lot of people take this a little bit too far. And they're like, hey, you have pain because you have a weak core. Or if you want to get out of pain, you need to improve your core strength or something like that. And yes, it is a factor in many situations. 
but it's not the whole picture. And some people just have a bit of a too simplified view around this, um, and they're still 20 years in the past in regards to this type of approach. So it can be valuable, but I wanna say it's not the be all end all. So typically when it comes down to the core for pain and injury, supporting the back, lower back um, pain, very, very common for a lot of people, um, improving core strength can be a factor in helping that. Again, it's not the be all end all, but it can be uh, pretty valuable. On top of that, um, it can help reduce our chance of slips and falls. Like as we sort of said, um, improve our balance and stability. On the flip side of that, that will reduce the likelihood of us having slips and falls on the rougher terrain, on the uneven terrain or whatever it may be. Plus, if you do happen to have a slip or fall, which happens to the best of us, no matter how strong or fit we may be, um, it can reduce the, the likelihood of some, some incidents of getting hurt in those situations. Again, specifically for the back, if you step in, say, a pothole, um, or you step on something slippery and your legs slide out from you, if your core can support you and prevent the back from taking too much pressure, that can prevent you from getting hurt. Pretty very beneficial. And again, I will stress, when it comes to pain and injury, core training is a factor. It's not the be all end all. A lot of people, you may go to a physio or a, 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 a chiro or talk to a Pilates person, they'll be like, hey, to fix this issue, you just need a stronger core. It's very rarely that simple. This is valuable, this is important, but it is one piece of the picture when it comes to pain and injury. I wanna stress that really, really clearly. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, please flick me an email, flick me a message, I can kind of expand on that a little bit more. So with that being said, um, common approach for core training for hikes. As I said, a lot of hikers have experienced this type of training, a lot of hikers have done this in the past. Um, and there's typically, when it comes down to it, um, there's kind of hikers will fall into a couple of different categories with their core training, which both are okay. They both you know, have their benefits, but I think there's probably better ways of going about things. But I just want to identify these categories because maybe you fall into them. Now, first and foremost is the old sit-ups, crunches, and planks, which everyone has done on one stage or another. Sit-ups and crunches, that typical thing you've done probably since high school, um, where you do them, you feel a burn through abdominals, and like, yeah, the core is really, really working, and this and that. Planks, because, you know, they're just the easy, well, not the easiest, the simplest thing in the world for the core training. Um, so many people have done them, and this and that. Um, really, really common in the fitness world. If you've ever worked with a personal trainer, if you've gone to a fitness class, if you've done uh, online sessions or anything, really, really, really common. Very accessible for you just doing your own uh, own home if you've been doing, doing your own training. And they definitely do get the burn. You can feel the abdominals working. And we're like, yeah, this is really good. I personally would argue there are probably better exercises for a hiker. Sit-ups and crunches, are they valuable? Uh, they're probably better than nothing, but you know, I would sort of say there's much better exercises than these types of things. Planks, planks are a great exercise, but in all honesty, they've been done to death. So many of us have just done them so many times and we're just sick of them. Um, and you may have noticed that no matter how much planking you do, it never really seems to improve. We might improve five seconds and you're like, oh my gosh, that was like four weeks of training. And it can be a little bit frustrating. So I would argue there are better exercises for a lot of people. Now, a lot of hikers fall into the other category of Pilates and going out and doing Pilates classes, which I personally love Pilates. I think it can be great, um, obviously, depending on what class you do, what instructor you have, and this and that. Um, it's a really, really, really great addition to a hiker's training. However, it does take a bit of a time investment, you know, 30 minute classes, 45 minute classes, 60 minute classes. A lot of hikers or a lot of people just don't really enjoy spending that much time in that type of environment and that type of training, which is fair enough. I used to do a lot of Pilates. I used to do 60 minutes every single week um, for a long time. Um, and the thought of doing that these days, no, I, I couldn't. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I would sort of say, you know, it does take a bit of a time investment. And then also it can be sometimes difficult to progress in any type of class environment when it's not like you just training, but it's a bunch of people. Um, it can sometimes be difficult because they don't create workouts just for you where week by week you can make it a little bit harder, a little bit harder, but they're doing something as a broader scheme. So it's not quite as simple to progress and just get stronger and stronger and stronger every, every week because you kind of get new exercises and new workouts and it's not quite as structured. Um, so both of these, you know, a lot of hikers do better than nothing. Um, if you like Pilates, happy days, go right with it. But I personally would argue there's probably a better approach to this for most hikers out there. Now, when it comes down to this better approach, the reason why I think what I'm about to explain is better core training for hikers is because I think compared to the typical approaches, we can be a lot more targeted with our core training. So as opposed to just doing exercises which feel like they're working the core or just like getting a burn or anything like that, we can actually choose exercises which have a particular outcome. So instead of saying, hey, we're just getting a stronger core, but we are actually doing an exercise to improve this, which will specifically improve this on the trail. And I think if we can link those things in, as opposed to just saying core training, but actually saying this will do this, which will do this, that can be much more beneficial. 
On top of that, I think, you know, just in regards to how much what you're actually getting out of certain exercises, I think there's a lot more benefits out of certain exercises compared to others. As I said before, sit-ups and crunches, I would argue they're not going to do a huge amount for hikers, maybe some benefits. Um, but if you spent the same amount of time and effort on other exercises, probably get a few more benefits and also much more time efficient in the sense that we can be freaking really targeted, we can really, really hone in, and make sure we know exactly what we're doing. A lot of hikers on one end of the scale, as I said, Pilates classes, that's fine. Other people will do 10 minute course sessions or 15 minute course sessions and this and that, and they'll just throw exercise after exercise after exercise. Um, kind of like throwing mud at a wall and see what sticks. And yeah, it can work, but I would say we can be much more time efficient than this as well. Um, so I think there's a much better approach to core training than this. Now, the way I like to approach my core training for hikers, this isn't the only way of going about things. This isn't the be all end all, but I think this is a really, really, really simple way of looking at things and a really, really beneficial way of looking at things is what's called anti-movement training. Now, what this is, is anti-movement training teaches the torso to resist movement and help it stay stable and strong through various and different situations. So as opposed to say sit-ups and crunches where we're creating movement to, through the torso and we're going up and down, up and down again, all this movement through the torso, this anti-movement training is kind of doing the opposite. We're trying to teach the torso to stay stable and strong and resist movement through various and different situations and forces. And I feel like if you do this, it can be super, super, super useful for hikers. I think it has really, really, really big benefits. I've seen it really, really effective as hikers. And I think it's a really simple way of looking at things which can just explode your results with this this type of training. Now, to take this a step further, you may be thinking, okay, anti-movement training. This, this just means any exercise which basically helps me resist movement. And there's probably dozens and dozens and dozens of options out there, which is fair enough. But we want to take this a little bit step further because this still is a little bit broad. And we want to kind of make it a little bit more targeted, a little bit more specific. So we can sort of link those things saying, this exercise will improve this, which will improve this on the trail. Um, so we want to break it down a little bit more. I'm going to do that right now for you. So essentially when it comes down to this anti-movement core training, there's really three big categories of this core training, which I think putting focus into for hikers can be really beneficial. Now, the first one is what's called anti-extension training. So what this is, is it's exercises which train the torso to resist hyperextension through the lower back. So the lower back, typical area where a lot of people will get pain, discomfort in one way or another. One of the causes or one of the things that contribute to pain and discomfort there is when what we do is hyperextend. So our back can naturally extend, so go a little bit like this. And the lower back, if it hyperextends, goes a little bit too far, that can just add a little extra force there. That can add a little extra discomfort. Worst case, uh, best case scenario, you know, you'll just feel it a little bit more. Very, very worst case scenario on the complete other end of the scale. This can sometimes lead to people like being like, oh my gosh, my back, um, it's gone or whatever it may be. It's not like, you know, that does happen to some people, not everyone or whatever it may be. But this anti-extension training are exercises which teach the body to resist that. So essentially this is really, really beneficial for pack carrying because if we're carrying a pack and if we're getting tired or something's going on or we're in a certain situation, the body's going into this hyper hyperextension because we have all this extra weight on our back already, that can lead to, you know, some extra force, which we don't really want. Can be really really beneficial for slippery terrain like basically if you're walking along and every single hike has done this when they're walking along and they all all of a sudden hit some type of um, muddy terrain and they take a step and their foot just slides out a little bit now in the worst case scenario if you're like oh my gosh i wasn't ready for that the core's not ready and it just ends up hyperextending the lower back that can sometimes lead to a bit of discomfort however if the core is strong in this anti-extension Thing, and it can sort of help prevent that hyperextension. Yes, it's still going to suck with a slide. Yes, it's going to still be a bit scary. But if the core can do its job properly, um, that may reduce a little bit of discomfort. So really valuable. Um, and same thing for potholes, like exactly the same thing. If you're stepping along, every hike has done that, not really paying attention. All of a sudden you take a step and your foot just goes boom, and you're not really ready for it. Again, that can lead to that hyperextension. So if the core is a little bit stronger in this situation, it can help. Now, a couple of example exercises that I'm going to show you a video in a second, but you know, the planks fall into this um, and which can be a great exercise, but I think, you know, people are just a bit bored. I personally love dead bugs, which I'm going to show you in a moment, which I think is just a little bit different to the planks, a little bit of variation um, and really, really effective for this particular thing. So essentially a dead bug, really, really simple. And there's a little bit of video, video demonstration here. If you followed my stuff for a while, you know, I talk about this all the time, but basically what it involves is you're lying on the back, arms and legs coming down one at a time. Now, the key to this particular exercise is when you lie on your back, you will notice there's a little bit of an arch in your lower back. 
The key to this exercise is you wanna squeeze on your abdominals and push that arch into the floor. So there's tension on the floor. And then as you come in through this and arms and legs going in and out, you're trying to keep that lower back pushed into the floor. And this is teaching that anti-extension. This is developing strength in this area and really, really, really beneficial. Now, this is a beginning level and basically start here, keep your lower back uh, pushed down on the floor, keep it slow and controlled. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of variations you can do to make this a little bit more difficult. At first, if you just keep this nice and nice and slow, it can be pretty challenging. If you do this for 45, 60 seconds, it can be pretty good. But if you get to the stage, you're like, hey, this is actually feeling pretty easy, then you can just make it a bit more difficult. You can hold a weight in one hand and um, that adds some extra challenge. You can loop a band around something and hold it straight above your head and the band will try and pull you across um, and that can make it a bit more challenge. You can push your arms straight into a wall above your head and that can make it a bit more challenge. There's a million and one different ways to make this a little bit more difficult, but it can be really, really beneficial. So this is an example of this anti-extension strength and I get all my hikers doing this in one way or another. Really simple. Now, the next area of this anti-movement core training is what's called anti-lateral flexion, which is a bit of a mouthful. But essentially what this does is it trains the torso to resist falling over laterally. So if you look at my camera right now, falling over laterally is falling over to the side. Um, now this can happen in situations when we're on traverses or uneven terrain, if we're rock scrambling, if one foot's, one, one foot's up, one foot's down. If the torso isn't strong enough, isn't stable enough, and you're constantly over on one side, that can lead us to more likely to have a trip or a fall. It can lead us to getting a little bit uncomfortable in the lower back. It can lead to a bunch of different things. Um, so really beneficial for this. Um, same thing for pack carrying. You know, we've all been in this situation where we're carrying a pack, and walking along the trail, all of a sudden it's slightly uneven, and then we just kind of feel ourselves like falling over one side, or if we're going up on a steep, uh, steep climb and we're on one leg, and we push up and we're like, oh, I'm falling over one side. This happens to hikers all the time. And again, if we can just help the torso stay a bit more stable, this can keep us a bit more comfortable, a bit more confident. A um, couple of uh, example exercises, again, I'll show you in a video on this, um, side planks, so really, really simple. Um, suitcase carry, where basically that involves you holding a dumbbell or something heavy in one hand, and you literally just walk up and down. And if you do that heavy enough, you'll notice the dumbbell pulls you across, so you need to straighten up and be nice and strong. So the side plank example, you know, everyone's probably done this in one stage or another, really, really simple. This is kind of a beginning version of sitting on your knees, but basically one shoulder on the floor, knees on the floor, you're sitting yourself here. And you'll notice very, very quickly that the abdominals in this side bit is just really having to restrict, uh, contract, I should say, to say, to stop you falling over, which is developing exactly what we want in this situation. Very, very simple, but very, very, very beneficial. Now, this is a beginning version. You know, if you wanna make this a little bit more difficult, you could do it from your feet. So you're, as opposed to being on your knees, you're up on your feet, um, which adds some significant extra challenge. Um, or from the kneeling or from the feet version, you can even add a weight on your, on your hip. So the weight's pushing you down a little bit more and you're resisting going that way. Very, very beneficial. And that's a simple example of this uh, anti-lateral flexion. And the final one um, is what's called anti-rotation training, which is a little one that maybe a lot of people may not have seen before. So basically what this does is it trains the torso to resist rotation. So rotating side to side, um, which is pretty relevant. So this is very useful specifically when we're faced with like external forces. So if we're walking along, um, not paying attention, all of a sudden we get snagged on a tree or something grabs our pack. Um, and you know, it's not usually a person, but you know, a, a tree or a branch or something grabs a pack or we walk in. And you know, it doesn't often happen, but sometimes that can lead to a little bit of discomfort. So again, if we can teach the body to resist this motion, be a little bit stronger, can be very beneficial. Same thing when you're carrying a pack, you know, there's lots of different situations where this is probably pretty relevant. Same thing for slippery and uneven, uneven terrain, a lot of situations where resisting rotation, pretty relevant. Now for these ones, um, you can, a couple of example exercises, a payoff press, which I'll show in a video in a second, a single arm dumbbell press. So a lot of people have done in the past, lying on the back on a bench, they've got a couple of dumbbells and they're pushing up and down, up and down, great exercise. Way to get a little bit of anti-rotation um, stuff into this is basically just doing this with one arm at a time. So you'll not only get the chest and the shoulders working, but you'll notice that you're having to fight yourself rotating around. Really simple, but very effective. But for the, um, for the payoff press example, really, really simple. Um, basically this one is a little bit annoying to set up at home sometimes because basically what you need is an exercise band, like a nice long exercise band, or if you're at the gym, you can do this on a cable machine. And what you need to do is you need to loop the band around like a pole or a pillar or something like that. And then essentially you're sitting here where we're kind of perpendicular. So in my example here, the band would be behind me and the band's trying to pull me across. And what we're doing is we're resisting that motion. 
can't really see in this video so well, but basically what uh, you know Michael, my, my coach here is doing is the band's trying to pull him towards the pole behind him and his abdominals have to lock on and support that and resist that rotation. So very simple, but very, very, very effective. Now, if you try this exercise, as I said, you can do this on a cable machine as well. Um, if you're in the gym, um, exactly the same thing. If this is a little bit too easy, you could use like a thicker band um, or you just basically just go a little bit further away from the pole and you just keep on moving away from the pole and the band gets heavier and heavier and heavier. Um, it can be a little bit more difficult. And if you wanna make this a bit more harder, you can do it standing. So this is a kneeling version, nice place to start. You can do it standing, you can do this on like one foot and that's a really challenging exercise. But this is a great way to sort of look at this uh, anti-rotation training. So those are three areas of this anti-movement training, which I think if you can include one of these in um, each into your week somewhere, can be really, really beneficial and a great way of going about things. Um, and it's super, super simple, but if you can get these three exposures, really, really, really good. Now, a quick note, you may have noticed with these exercises I'm demonstrating that these three exercises probably predominantly target the abdominals. Um, you know, they are used in other areas, but predominantly work in the abdominals. And earlier that I did sort of say, look, the core does encompass more than this, the back, the hips, the pelvis, all of that. Um, so you may be wondering that. The reason why I'm sort of showing these exercises really sort of target these abdominals is because when you typically follow like a well-rounded strength program, where it's kind of covering all your typical bases um, and it's well-structured, those other areas, the hips, the pelvis, the back, are probably getting plenty of attention from typical strength exercises. So for example, the hips and the pelvis and the back, they all get worked through things like single-legged deadlifts or, um, or, or glute bridges or whatever it may be. Um, so typically, if you're following a well-rounded program, those other areas will already be working. And we're kind of just filling in the gaps with these abdominal exercises here. Now, some people in certain situations may need a little bit extra targeting in certain areas. Say, hey, the back's a weak spot or hey, the pelvis is a weak spot. Hey, the hip flex is a weak spot. We want to do specific exercises on them. Um, but for most people, you probably get away with just doing a typical strength training program. Um, now, saying that, if you're unsure about strength training, I'm, I'm saying, hey, if you just follow a typical program, that'll help. But you're like, well, what is a typical program? Or how do I go about that? Or, or I don't even know if I'm doing the right things, whatever it may be. If you're unsure about strength training for hiking, I have something for you. Um, basically, I have a really cool little free mini course around getting started with strength training for hiking. Um, inside this course, it'll cover some of the specific benefits of strength training for hikers. Today, we're talking about core training, but this goes into strength training a little bit more. It talks about the principles of effective strength training so you can understand how to get the most out of this type of thing. And it will also teach you how to put together your own strength workouts to help your hiking. So it gives you some examples, some templates, and you can just plug and play and put together your own workouts to help with this. If you did want to get your hands on this course, it is completely free. Um, all you need to do is go to summitstrength.com.au slash strength dash mini course. That's summitstrength.com.au slash strength dash mini course. You can plug in your email on that page. It'll set you up on the course and you can check it out at your own leisure. So if you did want to learn about strength training, that's for you there. Now, I've talked about core training. I've talked about anti-movement training. I've talked about those three areas, which I think are really, really, really beneficial. How can you get the most out of this type of training um, in your actual week? So first and foremost, we want to be there making sure we're going in with the lens with progressive overload. In the sense that, as with any type of training, whether it's cardio, whether it's strength training, whether it's anything like that, the body will get used to a challenge relatively quickly. The body doesn't like being uncomfortable. So you'll give a challenge, the body will be like, hey, I need to, I, I don't like being uncomfortable. I'm going to adapt to get fitter, stronger, or whatever it may be. So in any type of training, we need to progressively give it more and more and more challenge to keep it moving forward. Now, a lot of hikers will instinctively understand this with their cardio, maybe with their strength training, but for core training, a lot of people will just neglect this. They'll do the same core thing over and over and over and over and over. Um, and we don't want to fall into that trap. We want to continually build and build and build and build and build. Now, basically, when it comes down to this, there's lots of different ways you can go about this, but we just want to go in the lens with week by week, month by month. We want to make things a little bit more difficult. Now, the first thing a lot of people will kind of fall to um, when it comes down to the core training is basically just doing an exercise and adding in a little bit extra time, a little bit extra reps each week. Um, so, Going back to that sit-up example, they may do 10 sit-ups, then 11 sit-ups, then 12 sit-ups, and slowly try to build that up. Or they may do plank, and they might try to add a couple of extra seconds each week. This can work in small doses, but if you're doing it all the time, you're gonna stagnate. You probably noticed if you've ever done the planks, um, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do a plank, I'm gonna try and improve my plank. And you do it for a few weeks, and you get stronger and stronger and stronger, and then after like three or four weeks, you're like, oh my gosh, I just cannot get anywhere. And you may be doing planks for months and months and months, and only improve by like five or 10 seconds. 
So this does have a limit. You can do this and it's beneficial to do, but it's not the only type of progressive overload we wanna look at. Typically what I recommend is every three to four weeks with your training, we wanna to aim to adjust the exercise you're doing. So within those three to four weeks, you do an exercise three weeks or four weeks in a row. Within that time, each time you do it, you try to add a little extra time, or add a few extra reps or whatever it may be. Do a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Reach that four week point and then you're like, okay, now the body wants a bit of a change. I'm just gonna adjust this exercise a little bit different to give the body a slightly different challenge to keep you moving forward. So there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. Um, first and foremost, a really, really great way of doing this is just doing a harder version of an exercise. So taking the exercise you've been doing, and just making it slightly more difficult, which kind of tricks the body into thinking it's a brand new exercise. Um, but for you, it's just making things a little bit more challenging. So for example here, like we talked about the side planks before, um, here are a few examples in regards to how to make things a little bit more difficult, a little bit more difficult. So first level is a kneeling side plank. You might do that for four weeks and each week just try to add a couple of extra seconds. Then after four weeks, you're like, I need a change. Then we go to the side plank from the feet and you do that for four weeks and each week you do it, just add a little bit extra time. Then you're like, I need a change. Then we move to a weighted side plank. So we do the side plank from our feet, put a weight on our top, do that for four weeks, slowly improve. And then we do a side plank for the knee drive. So we're in a side plank and position. Then we take our top knee and we bring it up and down, bring it up and down. So you end up just being on one foot at a time, which is really challenging. And then the next version is you can do that with a band around your feet. So you loop a little band around your mini feet, uh, around your feet, holding a side plank position, drive your knee up and down, and you'll notice the band gives a resistance and it's really, really difficult. So that ends up being four, eight, 12, 16, 20 weeks. That's five months of core training here um, where you can progressively get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And you can keep on doing this indefinitely. Um, and then if you wanted, you can keep on making it harder or you could even go back to the top. Um, and you might be like, okay, I'm gonna do a kneeling side plank. It's way easier, but I'm just gonna do double the amount of time and slowly build up, whatever. That's a really simple progression, but it works really, really well. The other option is you, you could sort of change an exercise which does a similar thing still falls into those categories, um, but it's just different exercise. So for example, you might do four weeks of dead bugs. You're like, I'm sick of dead bugs, now I'm gonna do four weeks of planks. Then four weeks of dead bugs and four weeks of planks, and then four weeks of something else. That's a really simple way, again, of just continually moving you forward. So you're not stagnating, you're not just doing the same thing over and over, but we're moving forward. A um, Couple of other things, just before I wrap this up, be time effective. So in all honesty, when it comes down to this, if we can be targeted with our core exercise, if we can follow that progressive overload, if we can really know, know why we're doing certain things, you probably don't need to be doing dedicated core sessions. You don't need to be doing 15, 20, 30 minute sessions of core at a time. If you really love that type of training, go for it, but most people don't really need to. Personally, I think if you can get an exposure to each of those areas in the week, you're doing pretty well. Um, and so what that would mean is you're getting three different exercises, core exercises in a week which for some people I may be like, oh my gosh, that's nothing compared to the 40 different core exercises I'm doing. But if we can follow this and progress it, that's kind of all you need on top of also, also your other exercises. Now for me, the way I like to use my core training is I like to slot my core training into my hikers warmups and my rest periods. So as opposed to having to dedicate five, 10 minutes to core at the end or doing dedicated core sessions, I'll, when my hikers are warming up, I'll get them to do a couple of, a couple of exercises of core training typically like the dead bugs, I think that's a great warm up exercise. Or in our rest periods, if they're doing strength training, say they do a bunch of lunges, then typically you need to have a rest before you do more lunges. So in that rest period, you do your core stuff. So you can be really time efficient there. Um, I quite like that. And typically when it comes down to it, again, if you can be dedicated here, a small amount of good work with this type of stuff is much better than just a lot of just average work. So if you can be, you know, go through this lens, you can get a lot out of it. And final thing here, just concentrate on what you're doing. One thing a lot of people do with their core training is they just zone out. They're like, I hate core training, this and that. Um, and they just go through the motions. They don't really do too much. Concentrate on the exercises you're doing. Really, really focus on doing the movements. And as you're coming through the movements, really can't concentrate on squeezing the abdominals nice and tight, squeezing the working muscles. So you'll notice if you want to use an example here, you can just do a plank right now. You go from this video, you can just hold a plank and hold that for 20 seconds. That may be challenging, that may be not, or whatever it may be. Have a little rest, do it again, but this time do 20 seconds and focus on squeezing the abdominals on nice and tight, squeezing the glutes on nice and tight, keeping tension in that area. You'll notice immediately that's much more effective. So when we're doing our abdominal stuff, focusing on making sure the abdominals are squeezed on and nice and tight, you get a lot more out of it. Um, and then also give yourself an effective challenge. If something's too easy, make it harder, simple as that. 
So that ended up being a bit of a long video, but uh, but hopefully, um, yeah, you're still watching at this stage and hopefully this has given you some good insights in regards to applying core training to help your hunting. Now, honestly, obviously with always, always these videos, a lot of information, some people can take this away and they're like, happy days, I can apply this. For some people it may end up being just a bit too much and maybe just want a little bit extra help putting this all together. Or maybe you're just like, well, you know what, I'm trying to improve my hiking. I, I really just want a really dedicated training program to help me there. Um, if you fall into any of that, I would love to chat with you. Now, ultimately through Summer Strength, we offer personalized training programs for hikers to help them get fit, strong, resilient for their adventures. Basically, all our packages include a custom, custom and personalized workout plan to get you ready for anything the trail may throw at you, including strength, cardio, core as we're talking about today, mobility, hiking, all of that included to make sure we're moving you forward. We're gonna educate you on the peripheral factors which can make or break an adventure. So talk about nutrition, recovery, self-care, mental strength, all of these bits and pieces and also give you the coaching support and accountability, keeping you on track through the ups and downs, all the things that come up in life. If you did want to learn a little bit more about that, basically, if you just go to summitstrength.com.au slash online, um, there's a big video there. You can learn about our program. And if you want to chat a little bit more and ultimately see if and how this may be right for you, there's a link there. You can book a call with our team and we can have a chat about you, where you're at and talk through if one of our options may be right for you. So with all that being said, hope you've enjoyed today's, uh, today's presentation. Hope you got a bit of out of it. Hope this helps your training. Um, any questions or any of that, please let me know. But aside from that, hope everyone has a lovely, lovely day and we'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye.